Hello! Have you ever looked at artist curated watercolour palettes and wondered which one would be the best to choose? Well today I have three by Daniel Smith and the artists are Georgia Mansur, Michael Soloviev and Jane Blundell. These are dot cards. Today I'm going to swatch all of them out. We can see which colours these artists have chosen for their palettes and maybe we can decide which one is the best overall palette. Let's get into it. Here we go, I've taken them out of the plastic. Now I'll just mention that I am not trying to criticise any of the artists here. Everyone has a different preference and it's totally fine if you disagree with me with anything I say in here. But I can already nitpick just one thing in particular and that is the Alizarin Crimson. It appears on a couple of the palettes here. And I'll just say from my own Lightfast test that I did last year that Alizarin Crimson is not Lightfast. It will fade in the sun and I would highly highly recommend choosing permanent alizarin crimson as an alternative. That's all I'm going to say, otherwise the colour itself is really beautiful. Let's get painting before I dig myself further into a hole. <laughs> First up is the Georgia Mansur palette and I'm basically just doing these in the same order in which I started the video just so that we don't all get confused. I'll flip over to the back because there's a bit of information about the artist. I'll link George's website in the description below and you can read all about her. She's an American born artist who lives in Australia from what I briefly read. But let's get into the swatching and first up is that very beautiful but highly fugitive pigment Alizarin Crimson. Having seen how much it fades in sunlight I would highly recommend going for the permanent Alizarin Crimson instead. Next up is Lemon Yellow, that's a really useful colour, it's one I have in my palette. And beside it is the really bright pyrrole orange. You can see on the cards that there is information about the series number, how transparent it is or opaque and also how light fast it is or isn't in that case of the Elizarin Crimson. There are no pigment numbers on here and I decided I'm not going to read out every single one because it's going to take forever. I'm pretty sure Daniel Smith has all of this information on their website so I'll link that down below and you can read for yourself. But in the meantime on this card I've painted out Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue, Carbazole Violet, Cobalt Blue, French Ultramarine and now I'm painting that much darker End and Throne Bloom. I really like this colour in Daniel Smith's range, it's one of the first ones I ever got by them. Shadow Violet's up next, an interesting one, I've never put this into my palettes but it might be quite nice to have, I know a lot of people really love it. Luna Black is super granulating. Now I noticed on this card as opposed to the other two cards that the colours on here are completely in a random order, they just make no sense whatsoever. So this was the most difficult of all three cards to really kind of get an idea of the colours. I find it hard to get a mental picture of the whole palette when they're so jumbled up like this and this is not the fault of the artist, it's whoever put these paints onto the card. But the other two cards are mostly in order so I don't understand why this one's so different. So of the three, this is probably my least favourite palette, mainly for that reason, not so much the colours themselves. There are some really pretty ones on there. That Rose Matter Permanent is gorgeous, as are the Thalo Turquoise and Quinacridone Gold. Those two I have in my palette. Quinacridone Magenta is a reasonable colour. Then there's also Raw Umber, Transparent Red Oxide, Lavender, another favourite of mine, Aussie Red Gold. Then there's Rich Green Gold, Naples Yellow and in a moment I'll be swatching out Buff Titanium. A surprisingly useful colour and I have had this in my palette for ages as well. It kind of takes the place of a white and it's just much better. But here they all are in a slow pan up and yeah they just make no sense whatsoever. But the colours themselves are nice. I really wish they were in a proper colour order. Comment below if you think that's annoying too or is it just me and my little hang ups. But next up we have Michael Soloviev and this colour palette is considerably different which we will see in a moment but I'll just flip over so you can see the back here. Michael Soloviev is a Russian who lives in Montreal and I'll link the artist's information in the description below. He has a website, I could just see it there. <laughs> I live in hope that one day a paint company will ask me to curate a palette but in the meantime let's see what Michael has chosen. This palette is in much more of a cohesive order and is a lot easier to understand. Starting out with that beautiful Indian yellow and then next is Quinacridone Deep Gold which is a much more orange colour compared to Quinacridone Gold. And then next to that is Quinacridone Sienna which is oranger again. Is oranger a word? It is now! <laughs> and next up is Burnt Sienna. 
which is a fairly classic colour in a lot of palettes. There's also transparent pyrrole orange, and it's interesting that there are four colours which are all kind of orangey. There are also two browns which are kind of on the reddish side as well, this burnt umber, which is a very warm one, and also the transparent brown oxide. So far it's an incredibly warm palette, and maybe one too many orange and brown colours for my liking. There's that alizarin crimson again, I just wouldn't bother with it, it's just like this obsession with a lot of artists that they have to have it, but that's one colour I have given up, as beautiful as it is. I think Daniel Smith's sap green is the best one I've ever used, it's such a pretty colour, and that's definitely one I have in my palette. Viridian is another one I wouldn't bother with because it's such a pain normally to re-wet, although this one actually didn't have too much problem. I'd probably just go with Thalo Green Blue shade instead. French Ultramarine's a fairly standard one, and then this much deeper Prussian Blue which is always a nice one to have, though that can be a little bit funny with light as well. Thalo Blue Green shade is one I've always loved by Daniel Smith, that was also one that I chose first up. It's incredibly vibrant, that particular version. Cobalt Blue is quite a nice one, it's pretty expensive though. And I also have Indigo in my collection because that's a really nice colour. I've noticed that overall this palette is a lot more muted, especially with colours like the Perylene Violet and the Moon Glow, and the Neutral Tint, and an Indigo, that's like four sort of shadow colours right there. They're all really nice, it's just interesting to see them all together in the same palette. Let me know what you think of this one. I actually quite like it, even though I prefer brighter colours for the most part. At least this one's actually in order. And last up we have Jane Blundell's palette, and this one has quite a lot of paint spots that have run, so it's definitely the messiest of the three pages, and the colours are all in a fairly decent order on this one too, if I remember correctly. Just a quick flip over onto the back so you can see a bit about this artist. Jane Blundell is Australian, and is pretty well known here. Her website's really useful, she has a lot of paint swatches and general information about watercolours. So onto the first one, it's Buff Titanium. I think this is quite a popular colour for a lot of artists, I definitely use it too. Hansa Yellow Medium, that's a really beautiful yellow and one that I really like. Also that Quinacridone Gold is lovely. When I was painting out this palette, just on that first line I was seeing that the colours are most definitely the types of ones that I have chosen. Transparent Pearl Orange is another one I have in my collection. I don't have Pearl Crimson though. That's a really pretty red. And then next up is Quinacridone Rose. Daniel Smith's version is absolutely gorgeous and I really love this colour. I was looking on their website and they have something like 266 different colours now. That's huge. It's really hard to pick as well when you're first starting out to trying to decide which colours to buy for your palette. I think I started out with about 16 Daniel Smith colours and then I've expanded from there. But on this line we have Ultramarine Blue, Indanthrone Blue and Thalo Blue Green Shade. I have all three of those in my paint palette. As well as Cerulean Blue Chromium which was one I got a bit later on. I have Thalo Green Yellow Shade, this one here is Thalo Green Blue Shade. And that one is a bit more of a Viridian colour. Perylene Green is another one that I absolutely adore, and I just love to have a dark green in my palette. Undersea Green is one I'd like to get, but I have not yet bought. It looks quite interesting, and there's my favourite Sap Green. I actually really like all four greens in this palette. Mixing greens is such a pain, I'd much rather just have the tube of the convenience colours, especially for ones like that Sap Green, which I find really hard to mix. Next up is Brown Ochre or Goethite. I'm not so keen on that one, it's a bit too low tinting for my liking. But Sienna's a fairly standard one, and then this much more opaque Indian Red, which is an interesting colour. She's got her own paint, Jane's Grey, and that seems to be a thing that every single artist must have their own grey. I need to come up with a Becky Grey at some point. And then down the bottom here we have two more browns, raw umber and burnt umber, with the burnt umber being a much more reddish shade. And here is this full palette of colours. I like almost all of the colours in here, except I might swap out that goethite for maybe an indigo or something like that. Possibly even a neutral tint. Here are all three palettes swatched out. Now I thought this was going to be much more difficult to pick one, but for me it's actually kind of a no-brainer that if I had to choose one of these and not change any colours around, if I just had to have one of these palettes as it is, I would go for Jane Blundell's because I have most of these colours already, so this is the one I am naturally gravitating towards. I think for me, it has the most well-rounded amount of colours in it, although 
it is missing a few that I also have in my palette that I love very much. One of them is that Aussie Red Gold. I also like the Carbazole Violet. The Thalo Turquoise is another one. Indigo I really like. I also like Moon Glow. I also have Neutral Tint in my regular palette because that's a really useful colour. I prefer it over some of the other blacks because it doesn't granulate, it's really thick and it can mix well with others. So there are definitely colours from each of these palettes that I like. But overall the Jane Blundell palette is the one that I would personally use the most. I think it has the most colours that I already own as I said and it just seems to be the most well-rounded for the things that I like to paint. Let me know in the comments which one would you choose? I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Are there any individual colours that really speak to you or any palettes that you really like the look of? There is no right or wrong answer here. To help with the decision, why don't I do some actual paintings? There's enough paint on the dot cards to do a small painting and I'm using Etcher watercolour postcards for this. The first palette is Georgia Mansur, and I'm using a reference photo that I took at Lambley Gardens last year, which is up in the left corner at the moment. Some really pretty Dahlia flowers. Mine look like blobs, unfortunately, but I did manage to fix this up a bit later in the painting. I was actually inspired by the Pyrrhol orange in the top right corner of the swatch card, and the painting just kind of went from there. I was looking through my old photos just to see which colours might work well with the different palettes. And I think this colour palette was good for this painting. But I did have to mix up my own greens because there aren't any on here except for the rich green gold. So the Thalo Turquoise got a workout mixed in with some of the yellows. It actually worked relatively well as a dark green. And I was able to mix brighter greens as well. So I think the Thalo Turquoise on this particular palette is a really useful one. You could use Thalo Blue as well. I think overall this palette's quite nice. And I actually own about maybe a third of the colours that are in this palette, something like that. Thinking back on it now, I put this one into third place, I think mostly because it was just so badly out of order. And that was bothering me more than the actual colours themselves. They worked out really well for this painting. And the top three colours that I would choose from this palette are the Indian Throne Blue, Thalo Turquoise and Aussie Green Gold. I do rather fancy that Pyrrhol orange though, but I really don't need any more oranges in my palette at this point. It worked nicely for the centre part of the dahlias, and I was able to make them look a little more textured and like flowers rather than just big random orange blobs on the page. This palette is actually quite bright, and I really like that about it. Quite often when I get a first impression from a swatch card, it's never the same as when I'm actually painting with them. So I was quite nicely surprised by this palette. I think the artist has made some good choices and there is quite a lot of variety here and ability to mix other colours which is extremely useful. I decided here that I wanted to add in some black line art to the picture to make it more sketchy and I'm using an Etcher fountain pen here in Extra Fine. It gave a bit of definition to my blob flowers and to help with this I also added some white highlights using my favourite Uniball Signo gel pen in a broad nib. I really like the bright colours of this painting, and here is the finished picture. Moving on to Michael Solovyev's palette, and I haven't got it on screen yet. I drew this in pencil first, and then I'm going over everything with pen. I wanted this to be a line and wash. The ink I'm using is Black Diatramentus Archive ink, so it's waterproof. You need that if you're going to paint over it with watercolours. The picture I'm drawing is another reference photo I took from an artist community in Melbourne called Mont Salvat. And if you ever happen to go there, it's really worth a visit. I thought this would be a good picture for the more muted palette of Michael Solovyev's. I really hope I'm pronouncing these names right. Apologies if I've totally got them wrong. So I mixed Moon Glow with I think a bit of Indigo for the roof and then I'm going over all of the foliage with Viridian and Sap Green. Also mixing in some of the blues to get a bit of hue variety and also so I can use as many colours off the dot card as possible. Some of that Indian yellow just for the really bright highlights where the sun was shining. I think my photo was a bit overcast, but I used my imagination to paint in a blue sky. I picked the cobalt blue because it's not quite as bright as the thalo blue, which is intense in a sky. And then I'm doing a wash, which I then went over with sap green so that you get some of the sky in the background in between the leaves of the tree. I found this palette a bit easier to use. 
because for one, the colors are actually in a decent order and it's much easier to see them, but also because there isn't a huge variety in color palette. Like there's a lot of ready orangey ones together, a couple of greens, a few blues, and then some darker shadow colors. So it is more of a limited palette and sometimes that's just easier to make decisions. If there are lots of totally different colors, it can sometimes be hard to pick which ones to use. I think the colors in this palette overall really complemented each other well. I would really have liked the Perilene Green to be in this set though, because neither the Sap Green nor the Viridian are very dark, and I had to use the Prussian Blue to get some really deep shadows in the foliage, and it's just a bit too blue. My mixing abilities were somewhat limited because there's only a small amount of paint, so I didn't really want to use too much on a palette and dilute it down. If you have lots of paint though, it is much easier to make large mixes. I think we get the idea from the amount of paint that was on the dot cards though, and I'm really liking how this one turned out. I used my pens again just to add some highlights and also shadows with a bit of cross hatching. It just gives it more of a sketchy look too, and I really like that. Outlining some of the foliage because that was looking a bit blobby, and overall I felt quite happy with this picture. This is the first time I've used those etcher postcards as well, and those are really nice. 100% cotton on the paper, so that always works well. Here's the finished image. I'm quite happy with this one. Maybe a bit too much white pen. Last but not least, we have Jane Blundell's palette. And once again, it's from a photo I took at the Lotus Gardens. It was just about to rain, and the grey clouds was just making everything look really punchy and contrasty. So I thought this would be a fun one to paint, even though it's a bit complicated. I'd drawn in the pencil sketch, but I did go over it with pen eventually, so it looks the same as the other two. I spent a bit of time on this one. I was trying to get in all of the details of the foliage as much as possible, but also trying to stay as loose as I could. The combination of the sap green, undersea green, and the really dark perylene green were excellent for the foliage here. Later on, I even used the thalo green blue shade on its own for some of the lilies, just around here actually. It is such a loud green, so I did have to tone it down a little bit with that Hansi yellow medium, but I just really like the number of greens in this palette. And after having done the painting, this is still my favorite palette of the three. I just think the colors work really well in harmony with each other. And this one does most closely resemble the first palette that I ever had from Daniel Smith. I'd saved up my money and had agonized over many days as to which colors I wanted. I finally made a decision, and a lot of them are actually in this palette. Weirdly enough. I looked up Jane's Grey to see which colors she chose to mix into that, and it is a combination of PB29 Ultramarine and PBR7, which is a natural iron oxide. Quite often it is called raw sienna, and Daniel Smith has one called Mont Amiata Natural Sienna, which is the same pigment. So Jane's Grey is ultramarine and raw sienna. That's an interesting mix. She's very lucky in that Jane's Grey rhymes with Payne's Grey, so it's a great name for a paint. I don't know about Becky Grey. <laughs> I would not have a clue what to mix either. But getting back to my painting, this one was so fiddly, but I think I got there in the end. It turned out all right, although I did make a mess of the roof there and I had to come back to it a bit later. I mixed up a bit of purple as well. I think that was from Quinacridone Rose and Thalo Blue, and the Quinacridone Rose was perfect for these really pretty pink flowers. It's such a bright and happy color. I really love it. It's one I totally recommend having in a palette. I did actually get Quinacridone Red as my first one, but then I decided that the rose was nicer, so I bought that as well. I tried to use as many of the paints as I could off these dot cards. I'm not sure if I used all of them, but I was pretty close. I'd say about 80% of the colors off this dot card are somewhere in this painting, even if they're just mixed in with other colors. That Pyrrol Crimson worked well for the fence as well, because it is a red fence. And then I just finished off with some little details, tried to get that pond looking like it had reflections, and I added in some more shadows around the bottom of the bush because it really needed it. And here's my trusty old fountain pen going around everything with a bit of fine line art because I just wanted all three pictures to look cohesive with each other. I hope that in painting these pictures it's really helped to showcase the three different palettes because sometimes just looking at the dot cards alone is a bit boring and I just like to see how they work in a practical environment. It makes it easier to choose colors when you know if they're actually going to work for the types of paintings you want to do. So I always recommend doing a little painting, maybe mixing some colors together to see how they work. 
and the dot cards are great for helping prevent bias remorse because it's a cheap way to try out a whole bunch of different colours and then decide which ones would be most suitable for your style of painting. Here it is, a little rough and ready, but I like it. Here's everything I got done today, three little paintings and the swatch cards. So I'm definitely putting these in order of Jane Blundell is the one that I would most likely choose, followed by Michael Soloviev and then Georgia Mansur in third. None of the three are perfect, but I think this is the one that I would probably use the most. Let me know in the comments which is your favourite palette. Which one of these three would you choose to work with and what would you paint with them? Thank you all very much for watching. As always, I really appreciate a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos, you might want to click on that subscribe button. If you want to see a couple more of my Daniel Smith videos, I think I've got at least one up here, and a second video of some kind with watercolors. I have a lot of reviews on my channel. So I hope you're having a great day out there, and I will see you all again really soon in my next video. Swatch so you later. Bye!